So with that, uh, I want to quickly introduce our first and my most exciting talk for, for the day. I want to welcome the SEC Commissioner Hester Purse and Marvin Amori. They'll be talking about all things DeFi and, and regulation. And um, if you have any questions from the audience, please type them in the chat and we'll be able to relay those questions back to, to Marvin, who will be moderating and interviewing. Um, and uh, I'll, I won't spoil all the content here. There's so many things we want to talk about, so I'll just let them dig in directly. So Marvin and Commissioner Purse, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Kartik. Uh, Commissioner Purse, uh, you might want to unmute. So we're going to be asking you a lot of questions. All right, I'm ready. Great. Well, welcome. Uh, we're so excited to have Crypto Mom herself here. Uh, and so very excited to, to, to have you here. Now, you know, as you might have heard, it's about a thousand developers at this conference. And I'm wondering, uh, how is this audience different from the audience that an SEC commissioner usually speaks in front of? Well, thanks, Marvin, for having me here, and it's a delight to get to get a chance to talk to you and to uh, all the developers out there. You know, typically at the SEC, we talk to a, we we talk to a wide range of people, but they're typically lawyers, not developers. Uh, just just candidly, um, but I uh, my door is always open, so I love talking to all kinds of people. Um, so this is a wonderful chance for me to get a chance uh, to uh, speak with you. I have to give you my disclaimer, which is that. The views that I represent are my own views, not necessarily those of the SEC or my fellow commissioners. Got it. Well, hopefully you'll persuade them to come over to your views soon enough, Commissioner Purse. Trying. So, so um, tell us, you know, how have you been think how have you been thinking about DeFi? You know, what's the awareness of DeFi at the SEC? Um, you know, what what are your what are your thoughts about its potential benefits? Uh, you know, just just sort of generally, how, how are you guys thinking about it? Well, again, I think this is an area where we are learning a lot. You know, the growth in DeFi has been pretty remarkable um, in, a, in a short amount of time. Regulators tend to take a long time working on things and thinking about things. So it's, it's a bit difficult to keep abreast of everything that's going on in the DeFi world. That said, we are trying to do that. We have a, um, a dedicated office at the commission, not dedicated just to DeFi, but dedicated to financial technology and there are people in that office who are quite knowledgeable and who are talking to people in the DeFi world um, frequently. And, uh, and we're working with our, our fellow regulators across the world to try to get our arms around, around DeFi. Personally, you know, I've, I've found it really fun to try to learn about it. I'm, I am a lawyer by training, so it's a bit of a, a stretch for me, but, but I, I do enjoy hearing people talking about the projects that they're working on and, and trying to learn a little bit about it. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for um, people to try to build a financial system. And, and I think it's not just related to finance. I mean, I think finance is probably step one, but I think there'll be other things happening in this space um, that allow people to engage with one another without intermediaries that they've traditionally had to rely on and to build things with people who are you know, spread far, far and wide across the world. And so it's a, it's a way to bring capital and people together, I think that is, is pretty um, unprecedented in our history. And so I'm, I'm excited to see what comes from it. That said, it, does cer it certainly does bring its own regulatory challenges. Um, so often when, uh, when developers are, are working on um, projects, they're looking for real world problems to solve. Right. So I'm wondering, you know, from where you sit at the SEC, you know, are there any problems you see in the financial ecosystem, the traditional, what we call TradFi, that you think maybe uh, DeFi could solve because it could remove intermediaries? Do you see any things that, you know, you might not have the solution, but maybe the developers should be thinking about solving some problems that you see? Well, I think from, from my perspective, when I look at the traditional financial system, there are a number of problems that I think consistently pop up. One of them that we've, we've seen is systemic kind of risks when something goes wrong uh, at one financial institution or, or several large financial institutions, it can have pretty widespread uh, consequences. And so that's something that I think is inherently something DeFi could be addressing because of the decentralized nature. Uh, another issue that we see is people taking advantage of other people, telling them they're going to do one thing and doing another thing. 
again, something that I think DeFi can address because it is something where, where it should be transparent, where you can see everything that's happening. You understand exactly how a transaction will occur and what the terms of the transaction are. So that's something that I think is promising. Um, so those are a couple areas where I think we see problems all the time. Um, but I, I also think that something that DeFi can do, because it, it does try to bring together people, um, many people into a, a, a system together, you, you can take advantage of decentralized knowledge in a way that it's much more difficult for the traditional fin financial system to do that. So if you think of something like credit ratings, um, where you're, you're trying to understand um, the risk around, around something, it's helpful to have a lot of different points of view coming into play there. And so I think that's an area where, um, where certainly DeFi can play a role. Now, from a regulatory standpoint, I also think having those eyes and ears um, of lots of people being applied to a situation can be helpful. Um, we're trying, you know, we, we're limited in our resources. And so trying to monitor what's going on everywhere is, is difficult. But um, I think DeFi can probably be part of that solution. Now, that maybe will look more like self-regulation than regulation. But to the extent we can offload some of the work that we, that we um, do and offload it to people who can, can watch over the system themselves, that could end up being a good thing. Um, another area where DeFi is often thought about, I think, as, as part of the answer, we worry about the ability of the financial system to serve people um, all across society. And I think that's something that DeFi can do well. Um, but it's not only individuals. I think we, we need to think about how DeFi can be valuable for getting capital um, to entrepreneurs. That's something that I think about a lot in my role as a commissioner. Um, so that's, that's another area where you might apply your, your development expertise. Got it. I almost heard that. Oh, okay. can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, I hear an echo. Do you guys hear an echo? I think it's like coming from the commission. Just mute. Let me mute. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, the some of the things I heard there, Commissioner, were uh, DeFi can expand financial inclusion. Could also help uh, with uh, getting uh, financing to entrepreneurs. Could help with uh, monitoring the markets, with many eyes on uh, the transparent blockchains, uh, such as you know the Ethereum blockchain. Obviously, right? There's so many people monitoring transactions on that. Uh, it could also um, help reduce systemic risk. And one of the main causes of systemic risk in the system are these intermediary, intermediaries. Uh, one thing I find interesting is uh, your point about self-regulation, right? Do you have any, any thoughts, you know, within the traditional financial world, there's lots of different self-regulatory bodies. Uh, and I'm wondering, do you, have you given any thought to how self-regulation could happen in the DeFi ecosystem uh, at all? Yeah, I mean, most of the self-regulatory bodies in the traditional financial system are actually quasi-governmental regulatory organizations because we actually do play a pretty big role in regulating them and thus in, you know, regulating the ultimate end that they're trying to regulate. So I, I think in DeFi, if we were trying to take advantage of self-regulation, I would want to see it be more a pure form of self-regulation where you really are... Um, working as a community to try to um, monitor what's going on um, with different projects. Um, you know, again, a lot of this is it's code based, right? So, so you can um, look at the code and know and, and understand what's going on. And I think that's a very valuable form of, of regulation. So that's where I see um, the strongest case for it. I mean, I think that one of the worries I have about about what's going on in DeFi. I think there's a lot of positive, but one of the concerns I have is that, you know, we, we portray everything as being very decentralized, but there are, often is a very centralized element of a lot of what's going on. Um, you know, there, there are ways for an administrator, whether that's one person or a group of people together to make changes. 
And those things need to be very transparent. Um, and so I think it's really important for the community to really take that seriously, to, to insist that projects are very upfront about how changes can be made and who can make them and what the safeguards are around that. Um, I think there are a lot of, you know, because there's so much money now tied up in so many of these projects, there is going to be a lot of interest from a lot of people, whether it's, it's someone associated with the project or someone um, from outside who's a bad actor or maybe um, a regulator is going to be looking in that, at that pool. And so I think people really need to be building um, systems that are, are able to handle large amounts of money in a way that's safe and in a way that they can prove to be safe to their users. So a little honesty, I think, can be really key in this area. And I think that's where self-regulation comes in. Got it. While you were speaking, that, that reminded me, and I wanted to, to clarify for developers who don't know, the SEC tends to not be a merit regulator, tends not to regulate the merits underlying an investment opportunity and tends to focus more on disclosure, making sure that the market has a lot of disclosure. And, but that just made me, made me realize so, some people who are listening might not know very much about the SEC. We just kind of dove right in talking about DeFi. Uh, maybe you can just sort of uh, explain where the SEC kind of fits within the broader federal government when it comes to uh, you know, investments in general and securities versus commodities, et cetera. It might be useful for, for a paragraph summary or two paragraphs. Sure, I should, have, I should have done that at the beginning. I don't expect developers to really be familiar with the SEC. It's, it's one of many federal financial regulators and we, we regulate broker dealers, investment advisors, the stock markets, options markets. Um, and we also regulate public company disclosures and mutual funds, exchange traded funds. And you, you're correct to say that we're, we're not uh, a merit regulator, though sometimes we give way to our worst selves and we start to edge into merit regulation. Um, but really what, what our main goal is, is to get disclosures out there so that investors can make decisions about what they do want to invest in and to make sure that when financial professionals and financial intermediaries are dealing with investors, that they're doing so in an honest manner. So that's kind of our, our mission, um, facilitate capital formation, protect investors, and you know, protect market integrity. That's kind of the core of what we do. Great, uh, and, uh, and also the jurisdiction is limited largely to things that are securities. So the question of whether or not That's a particular key. cryptocurrency is a security or not uh, is, the, is a big threshold question that determines whether or not a token will be regulated a certain way. And I know that you had proposed uh, uh, a safe harbor uh, to try to get some clarity uh, um, because it's a new area of technology, it's new market structures, and a lot of the existing laws aren't totally crystal clear. And so you propose something that would be crystal clear. Do you, want, do you want to sort of explain the safe harbor in a few sentences and kind of where it is in the process? So I can't promise that the safe harbor would be crystal clear either, but it's designed to give a little bit more, um, a little bit more definition around when something needs to be treated as a securities offering and how you could do a token distribution event consistent with the securities laws. Right now, we have a very broad definition of security, which is intentional because you want to make sure that if someone is raising capital to build a company, that that is encompassed within, within our, our jurisdiction. So we have this kind of open-ended uh, definition that captures those kinds of things. But that has been quite difficult for a lot of, uh, a lot of projects that are trying to do a, a token release, that are trying to get the tokens out there so that people can use them in the network and that the network can take hold with network effects. And so what I, what I proposed is you have a three year period um, where you make disclosures to the people who are buying your tokens, you update those disclosures periodically, you're telling people what the token economics is, you're telling them what your plan for development is. And you're, when you tell them that, you better be telling them the truth because you're subject to the anti-fraud rules under the securities laws. 
But at the end of three years, if you can show that your token is a uh, utility token, essentially, or if you can show that your network is decentralized, then you can move out of the securities framework and you can go about your merry way without worrying about the securities laws. Um, this is something that from talking to people in this space, they, they think it would be useful because we've, we've tended to provide most of our guidance in this area through enforcement actions, which can be a very unpleasant way to learn the law. And I think it would behoove everyone if we set out clear guidelines up front so that people who are really trying to do the right thing had an avenue to do that. Got it. And so, and so your, your reference to enforcement action reminded me, uh, I believe it was last week or the week before, the SEC put out a, a list of priorities for the year. I think they were rulemaking priorities. And, and I, if I'm not wrong, nothing about cryptocurrency was on that list. Uh, how, did, how did you interpret that or how, how should people think about that potentially? Well, yeah, I was not too happy about the emission of crypto on the list. I think not only would I like to see my safe harbor on that list, that's, I should clarify, I'm one of five commissioners. And so I'm not the chairman, so I don't set the agenda. But I, I put the safe harbor out there in the hopes that the chairman would put it on the agenda. So that disappoints me. And I think there are other areas um, related to crypto around custody where we could be providing more clarity for people. Um, now, our chair is new and so and does know this space quite well. So I expect that we'll see something regarding crypto happening. He's been speaking out already. Um, and I think what he'd like to see is he'd like to see the cash markets, the crypto cash markets. So exchanges, he'd like to see those regulated, whether that's by the SEC or some other regulator. But that would require Congress to come in and, and give that jurisdiction to someone right now. The CFTC has some limited jurisdiction over, over those markets, but, um, but it's, it, it's something that he's spoken out a, a number of times now already on. Got it. Um, we have a question from the audience, which I think is a, is a great question. Uh, the question is, is there a department or liaison at the SEC to help new companies navigate this burgeoning field? That there are lots of potential legal landmines. And uh, is there anything that an entrepreneur can do to, to sort of have a channel with the SEC? Well, so I mentioned our, our office that deals with financial technology, and that's the place where I would recommend you start. So it's called the FinHub, and you can find that on our website, and you can contact them, and they will meet with you. Probably now it would be virtually, um, and they do a lot of meetings with developers. So that's what I would recommend you do. You're always welcome to come talk to me. I enjoy talking to people. Um, but the, the difficulty, and I just I have to warn people about this, I think I, I always recommend people go and talk to FinHub, but you can end up in very protracted discussions that can be frustratingly slow. And ultimately, you really do need to get your own lawyer. They'll flag for you some of the things that you need to think about. But this is not, this is not an easy area of the law. Um, and certainly the inter intersection between crypto and securities laws is a difficult one. And there are a lot of potential landmines on the way. So you really do have to be careful. Um, you know, I try to push us to move faster on things, but um, I've been at the commission for three years now and uh, it's, it's been, you know, sort of a slow going um, to get stuff to move faster. Yeah, so this is not legal advice. I'm a, a lawyer, but not anyone's lawyer. Uh, you know, step one, Try not to do anything shady. Try to do something that's you know good for the world, right? Already you're in a better place, right? If you're actually trying to do the right thing, even if you don't know what the law is. Two, if you get any traction, get your own lawyer, right? And then think about uh, interfacing with with FinHub because those lawyers all know FinHub. Uh, there are lots of great law firms that work in the space, and uh, you know I'm I'm at Amori on Twitter, uh, and I can you know I'll recommend one right right now, right? I, I think the folks at Goodwin do a good job. The folks that uh, there's, there's a set of law firms, uh, Latham, that do quite a good job. But um, feel free to DM me, and and uh, and I'll, I'll send you to to one of my one of my <laughs> one of the lawyers I think is good after talking to many many lawyers in the space. But I think I think what what Commissioner said makes perfect sense. You need your own lawyer. Um, so the other uh, question we have here is, um, you know, this is actually a great question. 
you know, when someone launches one of these DeFi protocols, Commissioner, it is not just in the US, it is global, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I was an internet lawyer for many years. I, you know, I remember when people said code is law the first time in 1998, you know, when Larry Lessig's book came out about it, right? And uh, there's a whole set of thoughts about how the internet would route around domestic laws and, 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 and there would be no domestic law anywhere. And they were wrong, obviously, you know, laws is uh, resilient and, and countries were able to impose their own laws in different ways when it came to the internet. Now, when these protocols are launched, um, you know, globally on day one, how should people think about um, the law in general, right? Should they should they prioritize the U.S.? Should they should they um, you know should they, what what do, what do you should they prioritize their local law? How, how would you think about that? If you have any thoughts? Well, I think you have to think about where you're you know, where you're based, obviously, you need to think about the law there. And, you know, the the reach of US law is, it's, we have a long arm. And so I do think it's worth people thinking about US law, unless they make very explicit attempts to exclude US persons from being involved in the project. It pains me to say that because I know there, there are instances where people do that. Um, in order to avoid our law. But, you know, I think really, if you're being realistic, your project is probably going to have some kind of reach into the United States. And so um, because we do interpret our jurisdiction broadly, we may have something to say about it. So, you know, work with your local regulator, but you've got to think about EU law, US law, and and uh, and law laws other where to other in other places too that's why you know this is really a fraught area it's a very difficult area to do things um do you have any thoughts on how early people should start thinking about that you know i feel as though you can probably wait until you have some traction before you have to think about it but i, I don't know if uh if you have any thoughts well i mean i always think it's good to start thinking about these things as as early as you can but you know realistically you're right you know getting legal advice is expensive. And so, you know, you're going to have to figure out when in the process you want to do that. Um, but, you know, I think starting out with what Marvin said, you know, do, don't do shady things. That's a good, that's a good start. Um, you can get a lot of free types of guidance. Um, you have to be careful with it, of course, but I mean, there are a lot of things that you can you can look at and read to try to figure out what you need to do. But the problem is if you're building something, you really do sort of have to understand the framework in which you're building and the regulatory framework is a big piece of that. So I'm always, you know, yeah, I can see your point about you you wait till you get some traction, but if you get traction, you might end up having to adjust what you're doing also. So I say earlier the better. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you articulated what I meant to say much better than I did there. Uh, so, um, you know, is there a concern about uh, some of the top crypto projects leaving and going abroad, or um, or our industry falling behind, you know, other countries? I mean, one one narrative you sometimes hear in crypto, right, is that you know, finance is the biggest exchange in the world, kind of by far. Right, and they didn't quite have to play by the same rules as Coinbase. Coinbase is, is a great company, but smaller. Um, is there a concern that if we don't provide clarity or, or kind of permit folks to to compete on a level playing field, that you know the largest companies in the space might be abroad? Is that kind of a, is that a, an important consideration that regulators have in terms of you know American industry versus versus you know talent moving elsewhere? I mean, it's certainly a concern I have. I want the United States to be the place that everyone wants to come to build to build things and to innovate and to um, raise capital and to to uh, to draw from our capital markets. So I want I want this to be a place that people want to be and want to do things and build things. But um, you know, I have heard from projects that they that they've decided not to do it because there's not enough clarity here. I think one of the disadvantages um, of of being in the United States as a regulator is that we we do move slowly and and that's in a way good because that's why we have you know we have very well established capital markets they're very effective and good capital markets and safe 
capital markets. Um, and so that's a good thing. And, and, and part of that is because we have a, a, a regulatory system that is stable and doesn't change rapidly. So those are all good things, but at the same time, you need to ha- be nimble enough so that you can adjust, so that you can be a place where someone can come in and say, an innovator can come in and say, hey, I have a new idea. I wanna try something new. Um, how can I do this in a way that's consistent with the law? And we, and we come back with, with, with a willingness to work with people to that end. And this has been something that we're not great at, whether it's crypto or, or innovation in, in traditional finance, um, we've been you know, quite slow. And I think that's part of the reason why you see um, less competition in the financial services industry than you would otherwise see if you really did have a more nimble regulatory structure. So um, I certainly do worry about that. Got it. Well, it looks like we have two minutes left. Um, uh, you know, I guess I guess the last question I'll ask um, uh, without being redundant is, is there any way that these developers can help you uh, in the commission kind of get more educated about DeFi, keep up with all this information? Um, you know, what, what's sort of the most useful and helpful on your end? Well, I think one thing is just come talk to me and tell me about what you're building and what what you're seeing in the space. That's always helpful. If there are things that you're seeing coming out of the commission that are particularly problematic for you in terms of what you're trying to achieve, um, let me know that as well. And if you see bad actors, point those out um, to the SEC as well. We we have a, a whistleblower. Um, you can come in as a whistleblower. That's on our website. Because I think if we if we do go after the bad actors, the good actors are more likely to dominate the space. And then maybe regulators, maybe it'll be easier for me to convince my colleagues that there's something really wonderful being built here. And then just keep up your good development efforts. I don't want you to spend all your time thinking about regulation. I want you to build things that are going to change the world for the better. Well, Crypto Mom, uh, you know, I asked you if this was like your usual audience you speak to. I mean, these are your people. So, uh, so, so thanks for, for speaking to this audience and joining us today. Uh, Kartik, is, is, is this all we have? Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Commissioner Purse, Marvin, thank you so much for, for that amazing talk. And I think it was a really positive and optimistic note, especially as uh, a thousand developers get into uh, trying new and crazy things. So hopefully uh, we get a more safer sandbox way for them to experiment this to the, the broader world. But uh, in the meantime, We'll play with what's possible on test nets for the course of this event. So thanks again. And uh, really appreciate you taking the time.